Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! What's up, After Buzzers? Welcome to Legend of Tomorrow, Season 1, Episode 3, Blood Ties. Amazing episode for you guys today. I'm your host, Roxy Stryer. You can find me everywhere at Roxy Stryer, alongside the very cool, groovy Lex Michael. Cool and groovy. Yeah, this, like, I was just going to say cool, but then I looked over and it was like this slow motion groove. I'll take it. I will take both cool and groovy. Yes, I am Lex Michael, all over social media, at the Lex Michael. And, of course, next to him, you can find the slow-mo Dave yeah, Child. Yeah, slow-mo on this side of the table. <laughs> I'm at, uh, at MR Dave Child all over the place on DaveChild.com. Mm. And I guess our flower power peace <laughs> man, <laughs> Frank Moran over there. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Happy Go Jackie. I know that's Lex's favorite Twitter handle of all time. Of all <laughs> yeah. yeah. time. If yeah. I we had make to make fun a list. of him because <laughs> his is the only Twitter handle that doesn't have his actual name in it. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> come That's on, right. get with the cool kids. <laughs> One day maybe we'll get the story. But for now, we're here on AfterBuzz TV. You guys can find us everywhere. AfterBuzzTV.com, YouTube.com, slash AfterBuzzTV, on iTunes, on SoundCloud, wherever you are. Write a comment. We love hearing what you guys have to say. We're also in the live chat with yeah. you guys right now. If you don't know what I'm talking about, 9 p.m. on Thursdays, you can join us live on YouTube, and we actually give you guys shout-outs in here. We read every, I mean, we we look at everything. We yeah. read some things out loud. We Pretty don't read the rude things. Sometimes we do, though. Yeah, sometimes we do. <laughs> no, that, but don't be rude. Yeah, don't don't be rude. We don't like it. Uh, we want to hear what you guys think about the show. So whatever we're talking about, comment with us, and we can definitely try to incorporate that in the conversation. Yeah. Starting with tonight's episode, how did you guys feel? We're three episodes deep. We're, we're in the thick of it at this point. How are we liking the show? Starting with you, Lex. Well, all right. So what I liked about this episode specifically was that we got our big two-part pilot, which was a lot of look at how cool they are. Look at all of this stuff blowing up. Look at this dude flies. They're shooting ice and fire. It's awesome. And in this episode, yeah, we got we got a little bit of that. But I like that we continued the emotional arcs of these characters. We referenced a lot mm -hmm. of stuff that we know about their histories from either Arrow or Flash, stuff that it would make no sense to ignore completely. Stuff like Ray's dead fiance, who I will admit, I completely forgot about. Nice yeah. reminder. Definitely a nice reminder for those of us who already know. Yeah, that uh, Snart's relationship with his father. Uh, you had Sarah dealing with her the bloodlust from the Lazarus pit. And we were talking, I think, last night on the Arrow panel. Uh, Thea's dealing with the same problem. Somebody, forget who it was, asked, how did Sarah avoid dealing with the bloodlust? She didn't. You Is mean Sarah Thea's BFF? Yeah, which by the <laughs> yeah, way, yeah, BFF. my friend, my friend Thea calls it bloodlust. I do think friend is maybe overstating it slightly. Yeah. It's more my ex's sister calls it bloodlust. <laughs> yeah. Also, was... the girl that killed me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> about that. All right, Dave, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling uh, pretty good. I feel like this episode. What I liked about it is you see them playing with who to pair up, and you see like different pairs, different groupings, and that's that is great about the show is that there's such a big cast and they're all interesting characters that they can really just shift them up every single episode and we'll get a new kind of fresh feeling we won't like retread the same ground over and over again which is really great and uh i i, I thought it was fun there was a little this episode was a little weird because i feel like there's some there were some holes then in other episodes, but I still had fun watching it. Yeah, absolutely. It's just a little bit of specific weirdness that we'll get to. Okay. Frank? I uh, sadly have to feel like this was just like a little, uh, they pumped the brakes a little bit on me yeah. for this episode. Mm. I, I mean, while I did enjoy some of the exploration on all, all the characters, I... Uh, uh, and, and getting a little uh, backstory again, revisiting Ray's, which uh, nice. I didn't uh, catch it maybe the first time back on uh, Arrow, but that uh, while well, his fiance is called Anna Lorning, uh, that's just the, the last name at least is, is is an homage to his wife in the comic books, Jean. 
Oh, Lauren yeah. Cool. So yeah, so they change the first name. So I don't know why they. Uh, I, I, I they think were... that's so she, he can still find a gene. Oh, like later. I there think you it's go. to keep like her his... sister. Gene yeah. 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 yeah, maybe. Oh. Okay, yeah. A little sketchy. That's uncomfortable. I think oh. you feel that they pumped the brakes because we actually did tonight by not moving anywhere. You know, we we did get a little trip to Central City, but we stayed at the same time. We stayed in the same place. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I feel like third they... episode in the same time. Right? Yeah, and mm-hmm. they they were slowing us down, but I think they did that on purpose and I really actually enjoyed that because I feel like we've been chasing ourselves so fast and I haven't really gotten a chance to know these characters and how they uh, react to each other and interact and all of that so I really love tonight's right. episode I am excited to move locations and to move to the 80s which of course we'll get to in predictions but for now the 70s are really rocking it for me and so are these pairs that we got uh, I was really happy to see Jax on a team this week right Captain Cold and Heatwave have really shafted him in the past yep. two episodes and been mm. like whatever Jax whatever but tonight they needed him and <laughs> yeah. I love watching the three of them. And I like how Jax had something to do. I think I said in a previous episode we really need to see Jax do something other than be a creepy walkie-talkie with uh, creepy the rest of uh, the rest of his pairing. But did you uh, say that? Did you call him a creepy walkie-talkie before? Yeah, yeah, I think I did. But because because in that previous <laughs> episode he was like walking around like, oh, I sense they're in trouble, and that was oh. like it. And it was like, okay, we need to see more that Jax can do. And it's a bit of a stretch to say that because he's a mechanic, he can fly a, a future time machine. But I do believe he's able to read an instruction manual really well and understand it because he's a mechanic. Because I've tried That's... to read those things, and I do not understand them because yeah. I'm not a mechanic. But although I'm thinking Rip Hunter de- uh, giving uh, this this guy, Jax, uh, uh, the, the mission to fix this ship, that's a futuristic technology. Yeah. Still, even if you're a mechanic, I mean, you're going to be dealing with some, a time travel machine hundreds of, th- hundreds of years more advanced than you. Yeah, you're dealing with technology that will not exist for several lifetimes after yours, but a, maybe it was right. a very thorough, uh, well laid out instruction manual. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, oh, now I understand cold fusion. Somehow this is great. I doubt that, but <laughs> yeah. all right, we'll give yeah. him the benefit of the doubt, I guess. But I also really liked, too, that towards the end of the episode, when, you know, and we'll, we'll get to it in more detail, but when our groups reconverge, I like the idea that even without connecting with Martin Stein and becoming Firestorm, he's still useful in a fight. He actually went in, yeah. threw a few punches, knocked a couple guys down, and it was nice. It was in a number of ways to see him Absolutely. demonstrate utility. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I completely, I completely agree with that. Uh, tonight, did you guys have any idea when Captain Cold reached into Rip Hunter's pocket and pulled something out? What the hell that was? Did you? Did anybody I, know? I didn't. I, I couldn't really follow, but I was like, oh, he stole something. And it'll come back. His uh, time wallet. Yeah, I thought it was kind of a. I thought it was the thumbnail. I thought it was like he was a flash drive or Absolutely. something he was gonna that, put in. That's what it looked like. It yeah. looked like he or a taser or a tiny taser. But it kind of looked like car keys, and I was like, oh, why is he stealing his keys? That's exactly what it but was. It's, yeah, that's actually what he took from him. Yeah. How did he even know? I guess because it's Captain Cold. But like, how did he even put those pieces together? He read the instruction manual. <laughs> right. It is yeah. a very simplistic, well laid out instruction manual. This is where the keys are kept. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rip, Rip Hunter keeps keys in coat pocket. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Have I shown you where I keep all my keys? All right, <laughs> let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys think that Jax was going to go along for this ride, or did you, when he said no, were you like? Like, all right, no means no. I thought so, because, I mean, if I was in uh, that scenario, I don't think I would be like, no, nah, I'm just going to stay back in the ship and watch some TV or well, something. Well, I didn't say what you would do if you were there, what you <laughs> well, think Jax would do. Well, that's why this I, isn't a show about Dave, Dave. <laughs> I don't know. I see everyone as a version of me. No, it's like, if I was in his shoes is what I'm saying, because I think... What I'm trying to say is there's not much else to do. Like, in a time period where you're not familiar, uh, I imagine they've been told, like, don't leave the ship because you might change some time period, timeline stuff. So if given the opportunity where someone says, come on, we could fly around a future spaceship around and and rob a bank, I don't know. well, sure, and I sense. also I can't imagine that Jax is completely oblivious to the fact that he's been getting shafted not just by the rogues yeah. but by basically everybody for the duration of this voyage so far. So I have no problem buying that he wants just to do something. If we go back to previous episodes, he's the one person who is here 
because he wants to be part of a team. Right. So I feel like I'm I'm the most excited to see the change in his character because he is so malleable at this point. Everybody is like, all right, you can learn from us, you can learn from us. He's going to kind of be a part of all the different teams, and then we'll see what kind of man he turns out to be. Yeah. Makes me a little nervous right now that he's getting in with the criminals. Yeah, but the criminals are trying to kind of infect everyone, I feel. <laughs> like, they're bringing everyone onto, like, a dark path. But that's kind of what Yeah, were. although, I mean, this crime, while they were stealing it, uh, an emerald was done for a more altruistic purpose mm-hmm. there in terms of Leonard Snart's life. He was doing it for more personal reason than not necessarily monetary gain. He was just trying to change his own personal uh, past. Right. All right, let's get into that, because... We know, I, I hate to do this if you don't watch Flash and you don't watch Arrow, so I guess spoiler this alert. This is a lot of backstory in this episode from other from other series. Yeah, yeah, so. A- absolutely. So uh, for the purposes of the show, this is a spoiler alert, I guess. But Spoiler alert! <laughs> oh, that's the deck, everybody. That's the first the time I heard it. Yeah. Kevin <laughs> Cold has had many issues with his dad, uh, uh, which they address right. tonight. But his dad is now in the current Earth and timeline dead. Yeah. Because he murdered him. Yeah, you remember well, that time Captain Cold killed his dad? Uh, yeah, it's also because he put he put his sister in jeopardy. Uh like kind right. of so he like suicide squatted her almost yeah. and put that thing in her neck. Yeah, so he killed he killed him to to keep his sister alive. And that's the only reason why he's not going back in time and just killing him, because his sister isn't born yet. And he was he was uh I saw it as him saying, like, okay, he hasn't gone bad yet. He hasn't gone evil. Maybe I can keep him uh, an okay father. And he says this at the end of the episode. He's like, I can keep him an okay father if he doesn't go to jail. So that's why I'm stealing this so he won't go to jail and so, then become a... Captain Cold's thought process is dad doesn't go to jail, dad doesn't come home from jail, dad doesn't beat the crap out of the family. Yes, that's the thought process, at least. So he's doing something to be like, okay, maybe this is a way to save my entire family from being beaten by a horrible man if he doesn't go to jail. Mm. Heatwave asks zero questions because he's just along for the ride. I feel like he's just down to steal stuff. He wants to have fun. Yeah. He's bored. Yeah. Legitimately, yeah. he's like, when I get bored. I don't know why he had a southern accent when I just did it. <laughs> when I get bored. It's uh, because he just want to talk like this. But I also I like, in bored. the first in the first scene we see him in, he is so bored that he has nothing to do but recap the previous two episodes while wandering <laughs> around the bridge of the Wave Rider. Yeah. 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 It's awesome, though. I, this is the perfect sidekick for Captain Cole because if he had somebody who questioned his every move, i.e. a Jax, Captain Cole would just be like, Shush! Like I can't with you. Right. I uh, love, by the way, since we're talking about Heat Wave, that in the beginning he asks, like, "Does thick mean I'm stupid?" But then at the end of the episode, he references Eyes Wide dude, Shut. Yeah. I so, love the idea of Mick <laughs> Rory sitting at home watching Eyes Wide Shut. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, he doesn't know thick means stupid, hey, but he's a big Cooper he's fan. So he's a Cooper. bit of a savant, maybe. Yeah. You know? Okay. He's a film critic savant. Yeah. I guess. Uh, dude, wait until he opens up about Antonioni. That's going to be a very exciting 40 minutes of television. (laughs) Can we talk about this Maximilian Emerald that we have been seeing in scenes to come, or we had been seeing? Right, because it's it's kind of a... It was kind of a red herring. Like a little bait uh, and switch. It's a green rock in the DC universe. Why is it not kryptonite? What is... Well, we know why it's not kryptonite. Well, look, yes, and I understand that emeralds are actually a real thing that exists, but yeah. still, why not? Not that big, usually, and usually yeah. it's like, if you're putting, like, a hunk of rock that isn't polished into some type of jewel, and it's green, we expect it to be kryptonite. And I think they knew that, because in all of the advertisement, we've been seeing that one line that was in this episode, where he, sees, uh, where he says, I've seen Dark Knights fall... And Men of Steel. I've seen Men of Steel die and Dark Knights fall, Dark by the way. Epic line. Yeah, yeah, it's a great line. But then usually that's followed by Snart looking at this green rock. And I think I think they did that on purpose to kind of fool oh, sure. us. <laughs> I'm a little I, I disappointed. I think they did that on purpose. <laughs> no, I Those think it guys. slipped right by them there at DC. Oh, yeah. They never even what? saw it coming. Uh, so we, we do go on the hunt to get this, uh, but it didn't matter in the end. No, I, I, another example of time uh, doesn't want to be changed in the way that it does. That. So the fact that he didn't get arrested stealing it, but he did, then he gets arrested selling it. Right. So I, I actually really liked that because I think that 
Captain Cold needs to be it to be proven to him as opposed to Rip Hunter keep hitting him over the head with it like there's not really anything you can do time as a way of coming true all, all of that right. he saw it actually happen before his eyes but that it, it's just interesting though when you get into these time travel uh, mechanics though where things like that where you can't you can't change his father's uh, fate yet we're trying to actually save Rip's family's fate so what's to say that you know he surely saves him from Rip, uh, from Vandal Savage but they're not just killed in some other fashion sure mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. people have been talking uh, in the in the Twitter and in the blogs and all of that about maybe uh, Rip Hunter's children, his kid and his wife being a fixed point in time, and no matter yeah. what happens when they get there, they won't be able to save uh, what with Miranda and, and Jonas. Jonas. Yeah, because it's weird to be thinking that we're really stressing to all the other characters that you know time is going to fight back against you, things can't be changed. Yet we're trying to save this one thing that all that out of everything. His family is the one thing that could be changed in the timeline. So right. it seems weird. That, why is he getting this pass? Yeah. Right, because right, and and his also wife and kid matter. The uh, most. That's right. But like, yeah. But if it's not Vandal Savage, it could easily be I don't know, like jet ski accident in the future. <laughs> future jet skis are very unsafe. Yes. Current jet skis are really unsafe. Yeah, they haven't fixed that problem in a hundred years. <laughs> don't bring that up to him because then he'll just go back in time and wipe jet skis off. Yeah, the, yeah uh, there will be there will, there will be better jet skis. <laughs> yeah. There will not have been jet skis invented no. ever. That's uh, season two. That's <laughs> where you said we have stuff. to go back in time <laughs> and stop the jet skis. <laughs> <laughs> Fantasy Stats Guru says, it's a strange premise because if the family survives, then he never creates the team to kill Savage. Right. Well, this is a Which very is the... typical time travel story right. problem. This is true in almost any time travel narrative. Like, Terminator's a perfect one. If they kill John Connor, they never need to send a Terminator back to kill John Connor, which means they never kill John Connor, back and then my the eyes start bleeding. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. So, uh, you said it perfectly, Fantasy Stats Guru. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and We're also don't think about all the people that they killed in this episode that are also probably have their own timelines that probably affect the greater timeline. But you know, and at first I was like, okay, well they're all they're all part of Savage's minions, so maybe they're not going off and having kids and really creating any time timeline. But like businesses. for all you know, like what if this this Blake fellow, like what if he's a, a distant like uncle somewhere, like what if he's related to Barry Allen somehow? Yeah, and not you know? only that, but he's actually a hundred years old, we find, and he's well, given he, like a little bit of immortality. We'll get to that later. Yeah, but, like, we will. We'll get to all of that. Uh, but instead of doing some killing, let's do some life saving. Oh, ooh, good um, transition. Thank you so ooh. much. I've been working on it for yeah, quite some time great. now. That's so good. we got Hot Girl on the table uh, mm-hmm. and she's not looking so Hawk. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. That, that, that totally got rid of the whole oh, transition from crap. before. Oh, I really tried to just leave. All right, so she <laughs> she's not doing very well uh, because she has bits of the dagger that have broken off in into her bloodstream. Her, in yeah. her bloodstream. Does that seem like? A, I mean, I guess it's a four thousand year old dagger. That's so, how science works. Yeah, I, this I mean, is I, how bodies work. Yeah, mm. yeah. Things get in the bloodstream. That does. To, to be fair, like yeah, if you pause to question the medical science even slightly it unravels but the notion of little bits of daggers flowing through your bloodstream is horrifying yeah oh yes but not as horrifying as a little man going through <laughs> my bloodstream rainbow. that made me happy it's though true. because it's it's like inner space it's and like, fantastic voyage and, and fantastic yeah. voyage i go to inner space because that's inner space is the one where martin short gets tiny and goes inside dennis quaid right no yeah. it's dennis quaid gets tiny and, and goes, goes inside, inside martin, martin short. short you just switched it up <laughs> i know because martin short you, you think He's, it's you think, tiny and okay. he seems like the more like obvious person to do wacky stuff inside a little vessel inside yeah. somebody but it's because they do wacky stuff to martin short's face anyways yeah. anyways well, i think we died digress a little bit. <laughs> yeah. uh, so so well, Ray Palmer is our Dennis Quaid. Uh, what, mm-hmm. Before we talk about the actual journey inside the woman. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, not even, I'm not even proud yeah. of laughing let's, at that. Let's that talk wasn't about me this time to say that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the relationship between Ray and Martin. Uh-huh. So Ray has been kind of for lack of better words, I guess sucking up to Martin this whole time. He's teacher petting him. Like, yeah. oh, I had you, you know, I was your best student. And Martin's like, I don't remember you. I don't remember you. Uh, do you guys feel like you were thinking Martin actually did remember him? What do you think of the dynamic? Yeah, well, I thought he did remember him because I he is he did grow up to be a billionaire. He did grow up to be... So I was expecting him to say, like, of course I know who you are. And when he said I was just trying to take you down a notch, that made sense to me. So I believe that. And then when he said he didn't, 
I, I guess I believe that too. But like, <laughs> I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, right? it's it was a bit, it was a bit of like. Uh, I like that. I like that he's teamed up with his favorite teacher now. Yeah. And I ha- I I feel like if I go back and team up with any of my favorite teachers, they're probably going to be like, oh yeah, yeah, because they were more important you. to the, the student than they are than the students are to the teacher. Really, in the end. Well, I like too that like when we saw Martin Stein on the Flash, he did have a a, a sense of humor that was informed by what is he is a little bit a little bit pompous at times. Yeah, and his his sense of humor was slightly informed by that. I like that Legends of Tomorrow, Martin. They seem to have doubled down on this to the point where he just likes to troll people, which <laughs> I really which I really enjoy. But I also doubly enjoy when you find out that no, he didn't actually remember Ray. He was just using that to give him a push. The line that well. I had a lot of exceptional students, which yes, he does give Ray that. But this, you, this today, you did incredible. But that is like that's that's Ray's whole deal is feeling insignificant and feeling just one of a bunch of uh, uh, indiscriminate beings. And so Martin knows that, and so that seems maybe ill timed to be like, oh no, like you're you're great, but you're not that. There are a lot of great people, dude. Like, <laughs> right. It's so funny that you call him a troll because I was honestly thinking one point in this episode. If Martin had social media, <laughs> he would be the biggest troll. Like he would be tweeting at Ray or whatever. You yeah. don't matter. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah, I really think so. Like if he was one of these people on social media, you guys know who I'm talking about. The yeah. trolls. Oh yeah. He would be the biggest troll because I think he just thinks it's funny. Oh yeah. And doesn't and doesn't realize that it actually affects people. So I like seeing it come full circle See, tonight, where he actually stepped up right. and was like, "All right, listen." I remember you. You were amazing. You were the f- only person to do X, Y, and Z in a year. I don't even. I don't even remember what it is that he could do, right. let alone do it. Right. It was some. Um, you did the project. You did the uh, math equation that Matt Damon solved in yeah. like Good Will Hunting. Begins with like an that. E. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Frank, how do you feel yes. about their relationship and what happened? Uh, well, I did like the uh, the shout out to uh, Victor Garber's uh, previous film work in Titanic when he was saying like, "Oh boy, these uh, these uh, uh, bits of the knife." Oh, that's right. He was like yeah. icebergs. Yeah. I know what it feels like to be in the Titanic, and then it's, I like reading the closed captioning. You just see like you know, Martin Sledge just groans like uh, even he realize like please guys you oh, are God. the reference king <laughs> yeah I totally <laughs> forgot nothing he was goes that. by you <laughs> that's I, great I love that uh, so then we do get Ray and he's kind of video gaming hot girl mm-hmm. and he's like boom 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 uh, <laughs> boom boom pew pew that's all that in they're, her, they're, they're right but in her body yeah. like and, and what but I always feel like there. with Ray's costume, it's always holding on by just like, you know, just uh, uh, hope and a prayer because it always seems to be falling apart. Right. Things are always falling off of it all the time. He's always got to fix it. Things don't go right the first time. Well, it's like, come on. But that's, I, I like that right now because uh, it made it so he didn't just go in and save the day and then leave. It made it so he went in, couldn't save everything, came out, and then was really worried he's gonna get big inside of her. Okay, I heard that. Damn. As soon as I said it. Uh, but I didn't mean to. I, it just yeah. happened and as I said it. And that's our yeah. show, guys. Uh, so, uh, but you know, you know what I mean. Like he's uh, so it gave it a reason to come back and and try again. Which we was great. we try again. We succeed. I don't think any of us at the table doubted that we ever would. Uh, and after that, Hawk Girl kind of seizes out and has one of those like I know what's happening in the world moments. <laughs> yeah. Uh, creepy as we saw her chanting. Well, she she also became a creepy walkie-talkie again to to her kind of like second half. There needs I to guess. be a creepy walkie-talkie on the team at all times. Yeah, there's yeah. always a creepy walkie-talkie. I'm not understanding the creepy walkie-talkie thing. Walkie-talkies are sick. Yeah, I'm not talking about the actual device of a walkie-talkie. <laughs> you understand that, right? I'm <laughs> saying turning a person into a walkie-talkie is a little creepy. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Still think they're pretty cool. Well, okay. Still oh, with the walkie-talkie. But, all right, okay. But also, too, so, yeah, she starts getting these visions of what's going on with Rip and Sarah and Vandal Savage at this location that they're at. And Martin's reaction to this struck me as a little bit odd because his reaction is essentially, how could she possibly know that? And I'm going, you hold hands yeah. with another 
another dude and you turn into a fire guy and you talk to him in his brain. And, and you this, also saw everything that happened over at Team Flash. Yeah, you like, know the Flash personally. Right. Like, yeah. and this is the the bridge too far for you. Well, mm-hmm. it kind of makes sense for me because Stein lives in the science world. So all that holding hands, <laughs> turning into a, a flaming Oh, that's real creature. science. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. More, but it's all like, they give weird science reasons, but it's sci-fi reasons. And all of the talking, having a connection with your dead ex-lover, that's more of the magic world. Mm-hmm. So he's not to be like, I right. don't understand the wacky sci-fi. No, that's a good point. I'll buy yeah. that, uh, Let's move over to my favorite kick-butt character, Sarah, yeah. who just continues to prove how she is the, in my opinion, toughest person on the team. Yeah, she's the best person on the team. I, I think. seriously I think so. I, I mean, it's hard to say. Everybody's good for something different, but she convinces Rip to let her go with her to, him tonight. She... Uh, without her, Rip would have died 100% when right. they when they go over to the bank. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just think she kills it. Every time we see her on screen, I'm like, alright, we're safe. Well, and so it's interesting that you refer to her as the best person on the team, or certainly the most capable, and I would agree with you. I think it is appropriate that they paired her with Rip Hunter, who, in my opinion, is gradually revealing himself to quite possibly be the least useful person on this team. Right. He seems mm-hmm. to be, and don't get me wrong, I love Arthur Darville, and I love what he's doing with this character. Rip Hunter seems to be uh, uh, middling to poor at everything he does. He's a hot mess. Yeah. He's a hot mess. Wait, hold on one second. I was like, jab this. That's like what Sarah did tonight. She's like chilling with him. She's observing he's being crazy. And she's like, wait, just give me a moment. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> make a weird video out of that, somebody out there. Uh, That's a great it's a gift. But I, I agree that he just can't seem to get it done. Yeah. And we saw that by flashing back to... Um, when, when did we even go to when he tried to oh, kill when he tried to, 1700 BC ancient Egypt yeah. yeah in Egypt when he tried to kill Vandal for the first time that came out of nowhere for me well that was nice because I feel like one of the first things that happens in like time travel shows and movies is like why don't they just go back in time to the time where he's they're powerless and try to kill them then and it was nice that we saw an attempt at that at least it made you wonder why he didn't go to Savage Baby but maybe it was, I don't know. We can come up with some explanation for that. Well, he doesn't want, right? Like, he, he's convinced himself that not uh, avenging his wife and son makes him monstrous somehow. So I'm going in a world where you already think you're a monster. You could yeah. probably, you probably wouldn't hate yourself that much more for stabbing the baby that would grow up to kill your wife and child. Right. But also, we haven't really thoroughly established, have we, like, at what point exactly Vandal became this version of Vandal Savage. I would yeah. think it would be after the, uh, the, the, the meteor hit. Right. So this takes place before the meteor hits. Right. Would have to. Yeah. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to kill him anyway because you would have needed uh, Carter and Chira to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. So then yeah. it's like he, st- he doesn't have his powers and Rip still can't. I don't know. Rip, Rip needs Rip needs an instruction manual for Rip, I think. He, and not only that, but Sylvia Love in the chat says Rip needs to be honest with the team. No more secrets, dude. Pour them yeah. all out on the yeah, table. Yeah, what else is he not telling them? I don't know. I feel like way more, though. Uh, hey, by the way, uh, anything about the council? Like, who's after you guys? What's going mm-hmm. on? Say something. I just feel like the more knowledge these people have, the safer they can be. Well, it's tough. It's To be a Rip's advocate here, I feel like it's also tough because he probably knows too much about everyone because he knows their future. So he's used to, he doesn't want to tell them about their future or their possible future if he hadn't plucked them out of the timeline because he doesn't want to possibly ruin that for them and ruin their timeline by saying it. Yet he's also going back into... Well, he's kind of alluded to it because he said, like, the reason I grabbed you guys is because you don't really... You you don't matter. You're not important at all. And he pretty... That's... I don't know what more information you need beyond your life means nothing. You spend a lot of time at Denny's, guys. (laughs) (laughs) That's like... There's something like that. They're like, oh, thanks, Rip. Uh, (laughs) Thank you so much, Rip. (laughs) There's uh, chatter in here about why they can't kill him too early. Alas, Dare Allen says, if he killed the person who became Vandal Savage too early in the timeline... The timeline, then timeline will correct itself, and another individual will become Vandal Savage. That might be true, but it's he did go back in time and try to kill Vandal Savage, which makes you guess 
Like, why didn't you do it better? Like, why didn't you at least bring a gun? <laughs> why? Which, that was my favorite the... quote of the whole freaking thing. Uh, there's no magical cure for what's wrong with me. Of course there is. It's called being better. Note to <laughs> self, Rip Hunter. It's called being better. <laughs> like, Right. But, like, why don't you get one of the hawks to kill the baby then? Yeah. We're, guys, we're also advocating killing a baby at but, this point. But oh, a really when you evil get the time, baby. Yeah, when you get to time travel, there's always the question about whether you should kill a baby or not. Yeah. And I would feel like I'd give it a pass to them not finding Baby Savage, because I'm thinking at 1700 BC, I'm sure they're, 1700 BC, they're not really keeping track of everybody's right. past. Sure. You probably know, like, in this this important point of uh, history, you kind of know where Vando Savage is, but his previous life leading up to that, who knows where he could have been. He Gideon. Yeah. Gideon knows. Really, That's who knows. Yeah. Really what he should have done is gone back in time, found uh, Baby Savage, uh, adopted him, <laughs> and brought him back to the future, and raised Baby Savage to be a good baby But then savage. the timeline would have corrected itself. Right, and then there would be a different... Like, now we're getting into the timeline. Okay, we got to stop All thinking right, about so it. So yeah, another thing really... that I loved about Sarah tonight was not just her ability to physically kick butt, but the mental awareness of what yes. was going on with the scars and, ev and the under the table, all of that, really, really smart, uh, which leads us to Mr. Blake. Yes. N interesting character we had here. We just kept keeping him alive mm. over and over again. Uh, how did he get out of this trunk? <laughs> I well, think they just like heard someone in the trunk and was like, wait hey, a second. there's a guy in here. For somebody who just got knocked out, though, he looked pretty good. He was like right. just chilling again. I guess maybe because he's been drinking he's that, the, that good blood. Yeah, yeah the hawk blood, that for sure. Blood. Well, and I like, I like, too, the awareness that you were referencing with Sarah about her being able to pick out exactly who is who and how they've been trained and where they come from and what specific threat they represent. Because we see a lot of people in this universe who have been trained by and or around the League of Assassins. So far, the training seems to encompass uh, being able to hit people really, really well, and that's about it. So yeah. it was nice to see, like, oh, yeah, you did learn other stuff while you were there. <laughs> it was it was also nice to see with his group of minions about why he has those minions, and it isn't focused around money, and it's not focused around a code like League of Sessions. Uh, League of Sessions? <laughs> League of Sessions. Um, but it's actually over the need to... You know, be as immortal as possible. The that power of of close to immortality or uh, long yeah. Long it basically, life. it becomes uh, it basically becomes a religious cult where he yeah. is not just the the preacher but the god the effectively, god. which I think is a good move. I think that made it so his minions are more interesting in that way, and also it makes it so we might end up seeing the same people as time goes by, and or could be in the same or different people there for the same reasons. But it's mm -hmm. why he's constantly being surrounded by supporters and not doing yeah. this all by himself. It did also make me wonder if uh, in a previous episode we saw Dark um, yeah, Damien, saying, Damien yeah. Dark, yeah, and maybe he's been drinking that good blood too and maybe that's Ooh. why he's well, And I, if I'm not mistaken Vandal Savage made a comment tonight I think he was talking to Rip while they were fighting about being the only one who is immortal or yes. at least in the way that he is immortal so I think we can then make a leap to yeah maybe Damon Dark's been, been uh, what guzzling I, hot blood yeah. what I got by that was if any of these other people get killed right now they're not coming back if they don't get killed though they could live hundreds more years than they would have lived because of Dagu blood yeah, yeah. good blood. Good blood. <laughs> good blood. We have a new thing to say. <laughs> Been one of the sip in that good blood. I I mm. became so squeamish in tonight's episode. Mm. I didn't seem to get to you guys though. This like we're not watching Vampire Diaries. We're not watching True Blood. We're watching humans drink blood and it you was, guys didn't flinch no, but it was interesting because it, like at the end of the last episode when Carter died like they did take off and they, the, the body was left behind and that's something like oh are they going to address that and it was cool that they addressed it but and also just really went full bore like yeah we'll address it and we're also going to drink the blood out of this dead body as well. Right. They also, saw it by its proper name. Yes. That yeah. good blood. That good blood. That good blood. <laughs> that good blood. That also, good blood. I, I watch like Ash vs. Evil Dead and, and, you know, really gory stuff. So I've become desensitized to just a pool of blood yeah. appearing, even if it's on someone's top lip. Yeah, well, for me, too, there was a question, I think not just in the context of the show, but also for us watching it, like, they have Carter's body? What are they going to do with Carter's body? And I almost didn't want the answer because I felt like it was going to be weird. Really, we like, uncomfortably weird. I thought we were going to get evil, dark, reanimated Hawkman for a second. 
That's oh, what I thought. I thought that. we were going to get Crow Man Crow <laughs> the, or something. By the end of this all, though, guys, we not only do we, do we take Hawkman, but we leave Vandal, we don't have the dagger, and we're going to a, a new place. Right. Why? What is the thought process behind all of this? Well, so I think this is where all of us started tilting our heads like a confused puppy. Um, we had a conversation uh, between us before yeah. we came into the studio about, well, if you've got Savage on the ropes, he's been stabbed, he's dying. He's unconscious, it seems. If you No, yes. If he dies, then you basically have to wait for him to cycle back somewhere else in the timeline and then find him again. But if you move real quickly, maybe you get him back to the ship before he dies, put the dagger in Kendra's hand and just have her go, you know, like, eh, and yeah. kill him. No, she's she's not ready yet. Well, it's but it's like it's that the only way I can justify <laughs> not doing that is if for any reason that goes awry, now Vandal Savage is on your ship and that's absolutely the last thing that right. you Right, you give want. him a time machine. Might yeah. be bad. That's true. But also, I got confused because, and this could, someone, I think I might have just like, um, it might just be on me, but I have no idea where the dagger is at the end of the episode. Because he was using the dagger like he used, I think it was the Staff of Horus in, in that green arrow. Because mm -hmm. was, he was doing the right. same powers with it. So I thought it was in his hand. And then at the end of the episode, they're like, don't worry. We'll somehow get that dagger back and back into your hands, Kendra. But I don't, why didn't they have the dagger with them? Why didn't they just grab the dagger from a dying Vandal Sa or a bleeding out Vandal Savage and bring it back. I don't want to pile on here, but I'm going to blame Rip. Yeah, it might be Rip. Yeah, might I'm be pretty Rip. sure Rip was the only one with an opportunity to possibly grab that dagger. There's going to be just like, he's the Charlie Brown of this whole thing. <laughs> There's going to be moments where it's like, Rip. Oh. I was a little surprised with how easily Rip killed Vandal Savage. Uh, yeah, it wasn't well, that much of a struggle. No, considering how uh, when you see him uh, in the first episode of the Flash and Arrow crossover, how much of a badass he is on that. Where he's and just how hard it is to take him down. I guess he's yeah. older at that point, but like, you know, maybe like, he hasn't learned all his blade techniques yet. Yeah, that's the eighties. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was. I do. I liked the moment. Like it was a nice emotionally cathartic moment for Rip, actually getting to inflict damage onto this guy, but also ultimately means nothing. And in fact, now creates a situation where they have to go to a completely different era to find him. Again, right. but yeah, but, but guys, how else will we get to the '80s? That's for, but like, see, <laughs> see, now we're leaving the set. We've had like the sweetest soundtrack selections on these past three episodes, and now jumping forward a decade, I'm uh, afraid. I, just, I hope we get take on me. That's my <gasps> only thing. That's what so I want. good. But I just want to understand the differences between uh, the Hawks and Vandal Savage in terms of immortality, because when the Hawks die, they reincarnate and uh -huh. born in, as babies in new bodies. Uh, but then Vandal Savage, he I, stays, he feeds off of them, so he, his body doesn't change. So it's not like he's being reborn. So yeah, he, does he, he just pop up somewhere else? So I does gotta, he die and then what? Just go into a, like a deep, deep, deep coma? I think we're gonna see. I got a question that might be another time headache, and it might be a mistake, but I'm still gonna bring it out. Okay. Uh, okay. So Hawkman cool, cool. died in another century that wasn't belonging to him. He gets reincarnated right afterwards, right? So are there now two Hawkmen? walking around at one point in time because he got reincarnated in a previous time that he was supposed to. Well, they they both don't re, they don't reincarnate until both of them are dead. Right, so, that's right. Yeah, so until so, Kendra dies, he won't reincarnate. Okay, Which so Which is why this time, time I was like, low key, Kendra, we shouldn't have the Adam inside you. Like you should go, maybe. Well, but that's that's how to save. <laughs> oh right, just yeah. kill her. Yeah, yeah just, just throw her out the back. Just, just throw her out the time. Uh, Find her again. Okay. Any other comments on the episode? We have some news and gossip to yes. get to. Uh, we kind of have another bring the ship all together moment at the end, where it's like we're a team, we can do this. Should we keep doing this? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. We For should. this other dead body. <laughs> uh, one last thing I will say about uh, Snart, though, just when he's, he's talking to his younger self, I thought that was just certainly, and all the time I've seen him on the Flash and everything, like the most just kind of like human and vulnerable, and uh, earnest all the time. Yeah, yes. it was a really strong moment. I agree, Frank. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, one more, and again, I really don't want to pile on here, but the moment at the end where Rip Hunter's like. And now we're back to working at full strength. And then Kendra has to go, um, 
Carter's dead, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah she's like, I mean, as strong as we can be without Carter, because yeah, he's yeah. not here, remember? He goes, right. Yeah. Right. Or my son, who also died, by the way. Right. Uh, she's she's uh, getting a lot of the short end of the stick here. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get to some news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. DC Comics Instagrammed a bunch of pictures. Uh, they're coming every single day, and they're little hints about who we're going to be seeing on the show. You guys should check them out because we don't have much time to look through it. Uh, but Frank, I know you were really excited about some yeah, of these. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, the old school JSA, guys. How can you yeah. not love this? I mean, you got the Black Abound from Dr. Midnight. You've got uh, the Sandman's mask that he's got. You've got uh, Our Man's Hourglass. Mm -hmm. And you're Ma saying Red Tornado. Right, yeah, the original Red Tornado. Uh, yeah. My uncle, man. How can you not love her? And like, look at look at the aesthetic of Ma Hunkle. I want to see Ma Hunkle just bounding around the frame on the CW. That would uh, make me very happy. That would be so cool. Really, really cool. I'm wondering if there's going to be a way because the Flash Supergirl crossover that was announced. Are we going to be seeing any Legends Supergirl crossovers? Legends mm. anything else crossovers? Mm. I don't know. Well, they have said that there's going to be alternate timelines. And I feel like and that alternate opens alternate Earths. <laughs> yeah, that that opens it up to alternate Earths. So you know, we'll see. I think All that right. can happen. It really does seem like there is potential if they so choose to just fall back on the idea of the multiverse and connect every DC everything that there is. So that would be all of the different shows, the movies, the older movies. If I get Michael Keaton to show up on Legends of Tomorrow. That'd Sounds be great. Sounds like an <laughs> infinite crisis. Yeah. Can you imagine? Can you I think it's all building towards infinite crisis. But no. Really can you mean. imagine? Cut to like six years from now, and we're going to the movies to see a Crisis on Infinite Earths movie yeah. starring all the TV characters. Ugh. It's like they do like well, they, it's like their Infinity that War. About Kevin Smith, he was kind of asked about the timelines, and then he was. Uh, I mean, Kevin Smith asked Jeff Johns. Jeff Johns was like. Uh, mm, like wouldn't answer and they right. cut it out of the DC special <laughs> um, <laughs> he was like mm, 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 he was like uh, uh, and they were like don't want people to know what they uh, yeah, uh, 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 on the infinite crisis uh, 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 alright guys let's get to some predictions then we're going to the 80s we're going to the 80s and now you're after Buzz TV <laughs> Brilliant, sir. That's, be that's truly, beautiful. Truly beautiful. Uh, what do you guys think? What do you have predictions wise? Uh, f anything from you, Frank? I uh, yeah, no, no big uh, predictions at this point. I mean, I, I guess now that we've seen Snark kind of uh, learn his lesson, I, I'm, I'm hoping it's not that everybody's got to learn their lesson about like meddling with time is not good. Right. I'm hoping it doesn't go that route. Where okay. It, that, but uh, in terms of predictions, I don't have anything strong yet. Other yeah. than, you know, we're talking about the Hawks. I'm still going to go my Wild West theory, but... Oh, what you got to do next time is yes. steal something from somebody in the chat and then say it as your own. Oh, ah, yeah, there you go. Uh, yes. Smart move. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I'm guessing Devo. I'm guessing Aha. And I, I only know the music that they're probably going to play. But I'm not sure. Guys, this panel's crushing the prediction <laughs> well, land. Well, it's because the 80s. I know. What are you going to do for 80s superheroes? And I'm not too sure. Well, then what do you think about what we saw on Scene from next week with Rip Hunter potentially being acquitted of charges as he was talking right. to yeah, the Time was Master? That, was that Martin Donovan that I saw in the promo? I think it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I like me some Martin Donovan. Yeah, my guess, especially since we're going to be delving more into the Time Masters, uh, my guess is Rip Hunter is going to screw something else up. Right. And I, I, think, I don't want to pile it on. I really yes. don't. I yeah. really, and again, I really like this character. Big Rip Hunter fan. But over here. big. I like, I really, hopefully by the end of the season, he gets a massively grand not, redemption moment where he comes through in a way no one else can because he needs that at this point. I don't know. I mean, you know who would fit into the 80s? And I'm not very sure about this, but Booster Gold will fit into the 80s. Uh, well. I know. We, I but just I feel like we keep pushing and pushing Booster I know, Gold. But I'm, I'm part of the pushers. <laughs> I'm on team push booster push gold. Your, push the gold. Uh, push, anyway, push the gold. I have a prediction, it. and it's that we'll be back here next week on Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific time talking to you guys about another amazing episode of Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, to the amazing panel, where can everybody find you? I am all over social media at the Lex Michael, and that is canon. I'm at MRDaveChild <laughs> and DaveChild.com. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at HappyGoJackie. 
You guys can find me everywhere at Roxy Stryer. You can find us at AfterBuzzTV.com, YouTube.com slash AfterBuzzTV, on iTunes, on SoundCloud, wherever you are. Give us that five star, that thumbs up, write a five comment. Star. We read everything you guys have to say. Five. You're the five best thumbs. fans ever. We love you guys so much. Until next week. Thumb stars. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.